All right, everyone, now it's time to continue with By Any Other Name. Let's go. The Federation starship USS Enterprise responds to a distress call from an uncharted planet. A landing party beams down to locate the source and finds a humanoid man and woman who order Kirks to surrender the Enterprise. Rojan and Kalenda of the Kelvin Empire paralyze Kirk, McCoy, and Spock. Kirk, McCoy, Spock, and the landing party with the paralysis, the paralysis field. Rojan tells Kirk that he, that he is now in control and, and, any attempts, and any attempts at resistance will be severely punished. The Kelvins are originally from the Andromeda Galaxy and have come to find planets suitable for conquest in the Milky Way Galaxy. Because their own ship was destroyed, they need the Enterprise to make a 300-year return journey. The other Kelvins transport aboard the Enterprise and quickly gain control of the ship. Hanar beams down to report to Rojan, then orders the landing party to a holding cell. Attempting to escape, Mr. Spock uses his Vulcan telepathic ability to lure Kalinda over to him, where they knock her out and seize her control belt. Their escape is short-lived, and as punishment, Rojan orders Hanar to activate his belt, reducing two of the landing team members, the security guards, to small couple cathedral blocks of, of a chalk-like of a chalk-like substance. Rojan picks up the blocks and crushes one to dust, killing Yeoman Thompson. He then transforms the other block back into human form. To create an excuse for being back to the ship, Spock places himself in a deep trance and Dr. McCoy requests the Kelvins allow him to take Spock to sickbay for treatment. The Kelvins agree and transport the entire landing party and themselves to the ship. Spock makes his way to engineering with Mr. Scott, and they find that they cannot get to the Kelvins' paralysis field. Instead, Spock has Scott open the control valves to the matter-antimatter system, and they inform Kirk that he can destroy the Enterprise if needed. Kirk opts not to explode the Enterprise in hopes of finding another answer. After the ship reaches the edge of the galaxy, the Kelvins reduce all non-essential personnel into chalk blocks to keep them out of the way. Kirk, Scott, Spock, and McCoy are the only crew left are the only crew left behind to battle the Kelvins. Tomar orders the doctor to assist him in sampling human cuisine, which he has been enjoying enthusiastically. Spock surmises from his mental contact with Kalinda that the Kelvins are inexperienced in human emotions and stimuli, and this could be used to overload and confuse their newfound senses. senses possibly leading them to inadvertently revealing their weaknesses. Scott introduces Tomar to the pleasures of alcoholic intoxication, and McCoy prescribes the course of vitamin injections for Hanar, and Kirk turns his amorous attentions toward Kalinda. Back on the bridge, Hanar becomes increasingly irritated with McCoy's injections and literally refuses Rojan's orders. Rojan orders Hanar to confine himself to his quarters. By this time, heavy, drink has a heavy drinking has caused Tomar to pass out, but Scotty finds also, Piscotti also finds he is too drunk to leave his own quarters. <laughs> Rojan finds Kirk and Kalinda together again and angrily confronts them, leading to a physical alter altercation between himself and Kirk. Kirk pins Rojan to the floor, telling him that his people are, are already becoming human. Soon, they will become so alien to the other Kelvins that in 300 years, when the Kelvins are due to return to the Andromeda Galaxy, their descendants will be alienated from their own kind. Rojan realizes Kirk is correct, and that it will be impossible to return home. He relinquishes control of the ship to Kirk and restores the crew. Kirk turns the Enterprise around and heads back through the galactic barrier. Rojan accepts Kirk's offer of being a liaison for the Federation if the Kelvins should ever return. The world they were marooned on is selected as a new home world so that Rojan and his people can live in peace. Spock suggests that an unmanned robot ship could be sent to the Andromeda could be sent to Andromeda with a Federation proposal. Hmm. That's actually a good idea there, Spock. Well, a pretty enjoyable episode with a rather nice ending. I give, by any other name, three warp cores out of five. Well, it's showing a little bit as we learn about the Omega Glory. So, until then, live long and prosper, everybody.